Sometimes in the bluster of February, it seems as if springtime will never come. But Oklahoma traveler Scott Thompson has seen the coming season, seen it in the high primeval forests of south central Mexico, and he joins us now with more. Hello. Terry and Paul, I can assure you it is on its way to be carried here on a million and more wings of gold. Photographer Grant Gerondale and I find the fragile beauty of one of nature's most mysterious displays. <laughs> Magic sometimes happens in the most unlikely of places. Here, where it seems the ancient mountain crags have been scooped and sculpted by a huge, rough hand, you'll find tiny sparkles of gold, an ancient act of nature, an amazing spectacle that science can't explain, but one, once grasped, the human soul can never release. To stand within the winter home of the monarch butterfly is to stand within a pulsing, fluttering miracle. puts me back into childhood, just lying out on the lawn watching the butterflies or the fireflies at night, just enjoying the beauty of nature. They are an international language of joy. The trip to see this joyous miracle is a tedious one, made today by staff and supporters of Bartlesville's Sutton Avian Research Center. The bus ride is four hours west from the choking traffic of Mexico City to the stunning isolation and gripping desolation of the Sierra Madre Mountains. In the state of Michoacan, the town of Anganguea, the bus seeds the rest of the trip to a cattle truck. Like so many animals headed towards an uncertain future, we lurch and groan up a dusty dirt path. Along the way, we see the farmers who cleared the hillsides of trees. They and huge logging companies are the biggest threat to the monarch. If the butterflies lose their forest, we lose the butterflies. The Mexican government has set aside five forest preserves for the protection of the monarch wintering grounds. But the preserves cover only a paltry 62 square miles, and the protection they offer is shaky at best. This one is open to the public, and it draws big crowds. From across the world and over the mountain they come. It's an arduous ascent in the thin air, but old women make it, children make it, and Scott Sherrod of Bartlesville is making it for a once-in-a-lifetime science fair project. This is just on the trail. I'm just taking... He's looking to compare the number of dead males with the number of dead females and perhaps gain insight into the perilous life of the monarch. He isn't the first to wonder. Every year, as the weather grows colder and the nectar-producing meadow flowers begin to wither and die, millions of monarch butterflies head south. Beginning in Canada, they eventually cross Kansas and Arkansas, Oklahoma and Texas. Averaging 13 miles an hour, they cover 2,500 miles to the last few remaining fir forests of the Sierra Madre. No one knows why or how, and when they reach the top of the mountain, no one really cares. Oxygen is, oh boy, look at all this. Look at all these butterflies. Whoa. Wow, they're going to hit you in the head. <laughs> wow, look. <sighs> this is incredible. Wow. What do you think? It's neat. <laughs> Despite the overcast, flocks of butterflies swarm from their perches and head for watering holes. From the time they arrive in November to their departure in March, searching for water is the monarch's only activity. We're at about 11,000 feet in elevation right now. The last mile was a walk up the side of this mountain. And this flatlander from Oklahoma lost his breath a great many times on the way up. I lost it one more time when I reached the top and was engulfed in this blizzard of butterflies. Amazing. No, this is just incredible. Just incredible. It's like a snowstorm of butterflies. <laughs> For those of us from Oklahoma who may welcome flocks of monarchs to our summer gardens, nothing can prepare us for this sight. All I see are more butterflies flying. And further along the path, in the dark forest clearings, what first appear to be leaves reveal themselves as huge, dripping monarch masses, bending the fir branches to the ground. Scientists think there could be as many as 30 million butterflies on this mountain. Spread so thickly, those on the bottom are trapped until spring migration. 
<laughs> they're taking it easy, conserving energy so that they can make the trip back, breed and lay eggs once again. That's basically it. They're just taking it easy. If you could stand where we do now, beneath a towering fir, away from the crowds, you would hear what sounds like millions of tiny tissues rubbing back and forth. It's a once-in-a-lifetime sound. One that makes Tulsa and Carol McGraw feel very insignificant. Awestruck. Reverent. Um, mystified. A butterfly has a special hold on the human heart. But like the migration itself, it's best left a mystery. It's enough to know that on this Mexican mountaintop, a tiny insect has linked the world for just a while. Different languages, skin color of every hue, but the smiles are universal and the joy immeasurable. Simon Monk has come from England. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing they come to the same place. Vesna Mihailovic from New Jersey. I was just overwhelmed. There were these thousands and thousands flying towards me. It was breathtaking. Beautiful. I think so. I mean... Steve Sherrod from Bartlesville. Uh, to me, butterflies are the embodiment of happiness. And to see this sort of a, a phenomenon is just something that you won't get to see probably again in your lifetime ever. We've been witness together to one of nature's most mysterious, most glorious displays. We've gathered beneath a miracle and peered into it, been covered by it, been made richer by having stood on this mountain. There are a few things in life you feel lucky getting to see, and this is one of them. That's, that's exactly right, that's the way I feel. I'm very fortunate to have been in a place like this with wonderful people like yourself. Appreciate the beauty of nature and the wonderment, the miracle of it. And it's not just in Mexico where the monarch's habitat is in danger. Here in the United States, we continue to destroy it with bulldozers and asphalt. But you can help in your own backyard. I put together a butterfly fact sheet with the plants you can grow and where to find them, plus the addresses of butterfly conservation groups. Now, if you'd like it, send me a self-addressed business-sized envelope stamped with 55 cents postage. That's important, 55 cents postage. To Wings of Gold, KOTV, Post Office Box 6, Tulsa 74101. And you'll get it just in time for spring planting in your backyard and make your yard a, a butterfly haven. When the butterflies nice are so beautiful. When will they return to Oklahoma? They'll start coming as the winter, as the weather turns warmer, and they'll eventually be here in the summertime. And then they'll eventually make that trip back. No one knows why. It's a mysterious. Mm -hmm. Those tiny little heads, but somewhere in there, they something draws them. What a special trip! That's really wonderful. Thank Part you, Scott. two tomorrow. All right, we, we enjoyed it. To it. Good. Thanks, Scott. Well, the nice weather we've had lately has the gardeners humming. It won't be long until it's time to plant those flower beds.